Hi, I'm Anton Smirnov, an engineer at AMD and the author of Nerve.gl package, pure Julia package to interactively reconstruct and render neural radiance fields, a 3D neural representation of a scene from pictures using heterogeneous kernel programming. While similar open source systems exist, they implement these algorithms using multiple languages which increases the complexity, whereas Julia lives up to its claims solving two language problem, at the same time maintaining comparable performance. By relying on kernel abstractions .gl for kernel programming, we are able to target multiple backends. North.gl works best on Julia 1.9 and currently supports AMD GPU via AMD GPU.gl package that implements the required kernel abstractions interface, as well as the NVIDIA GPU which are backed by CUDA.gl package in a similar fashion. As other backends like Metal.gl or OneAPI.gl mature, it should be trivial to add support for them as North.gl is entirely backend agnostic. For volumetric representation, NERF.gl uses multi-resolution hash encoding from instant neural graphics primitives coupled with two MLPs, one for density and one for emitted radiance. We implement efficient kernels for multi-resolution hash encoding, ray marching, acceleration structures and others, as well as provide kernels that compute gradients for them entirely relying on kernel abstractions. As can be seen, the kernels themselves do not have any backend specific code, which makes them easily adaptable to multiple devices. All you need to do is provide a specific backend on which you want to launch it. Finally, we integrate those kernels with Julia's AD ecosystem using chain rules.gl package. This allows each component of NERF.gl to be used independently and with the AD system of your choice that supports these rules. Besides regular color rendering mode, we implement a number of other modes, such as rendering depths of the reconstructed environment, rendering ambient occlusion, and rendering normals by taking gradients of the model with respect to input coordinates and other modes like encoding visualization. To allow rendering high resolution frames and avoid running out of memory, we support tiling rendering where frames are processed in small chunks, thus reducing the amount of required memory. Users can change rendering resolution on the fly, adapting it to their needs and to new datasets. Additionally, NERF.gl provides the ability to convert a trained NERF to a regular triangle mesh using marching cubes or marching tetrahedra. To obtain vertex colors, we use the same rendering approach as for regular color mode, casting rays in the direction of vertex normals and accumulating final color. These models can then be used in a regular computer graphics software. We bundle all this into an OpenGL application named nerfgui.gl that enables real-time interaction and tweaking of nerves. Users can freely fly around the environment, changing rendering resolution for better performance, visualize or change the bounding box of the environment and view camera positions. Users can also visualize occupancy acceleration structure, which we use to speed up ray marching, and which shows what locations are occupied and shows the density at those locations. As was mentioned previously, we support a number of other rendering modes besides regular color rendering, which users can select between. Also, once you switch to a high enough resolution, renderer automatically switches to tiled mode to preserve memory. NerfGUI.gl also supports capturing videos using user-created camera paths, which you can construct and edit in the application itself. Additionally, users can select a number of interpolation steps between adjacent camera positions and a number of frames per second in the final video. And of course, all NERF videos in this presentation were made using NERFGUI.gl package. We use standard Julia I.O. packages for both saving rendered frames and writing videos. During the development of this package, we've made a number of improvements to the AMD GPU.gl package. 
which is responsible for providing support for the AMD GPU backend. We now provide a basic set of ROCOM artifacts, so that the user does not need to install them manually. Overall improved support and stability for RDNA 2 GPUs, as well as added support of AMD GPU in Flux.gl, a pure Julia deep learning library. And with latest changes, AMD GPU.gl is moving entirely to HIP, abandoning HSA and HIP interplay. This significantly reduces latency and eliminates unnecessary host synchronization, and Julia kernels are now dispatched on HIP streams instead of HSA queues allowing for a number of optimizations to be done, including stream ordered allocation and deallocation, drop and synchronization state for each array as we no longer need to track what executes on HSA queues versus heap streams. And lastly, mdgpu.gel now supports reporting precise stack traces when exception occurs during kernel execution. That said, Julia programming model still presents a challenge for certain backends, as it uses garbage collection for memory management, where GC is not aware of other memory spaces, often ending up in close to out-of-memory situations, increasing pressure on the allocator. Hopefully, things like eager finalizer inlining will get better in the future, thus reducing pressure on the allocator. Special thanks to Julia and Samaru, Valentin Churavi and Tim Bessart for their work on Julia GPU and many others involved in it. Without this work, Nerf.gl wouldn't be possible in the first place. In conclusion, with Nerf.gl we showed that Julia provides a unique opportunity as it solves two language problems at the same time targeting multiple backends and providing comparable performance as Nerf.gl works in real time. And as Julia GPU ecosystem evolves further, the performance will only get better. Thank you for your attention and stay tuned for more.